If you're thinking about moving to Hamilton, Ontario, you're gonna wanna watch this video as here I'm gonna try to create the ultimate moving guide to Hamilton, Ontario. So you best know what are the best and worst neighborhoods for you and your family. What are the different pros and cons associated with different communities? What are the major roadways you can expect to drive on if you're looking to commute to work or commute to recent shopping malls in each of the different areas, as well as the cost of living in Hamilton. So we're gonna be covering all of that and more in today's video. So if you are new here, my name is Matthew, I'm a local realtor, and this is my channel where I share everything about what it's like living and moving to Hamilton, Ontario. And we've actually had a bunch of people reach out looking to move here as well. So if you're interested in moving to Hamilton, Ontario, send me a message today. Otherwise, let's just jump on into it and first talk about the major roadways and systems you can expect to drive on when living in Hamilton. So here we have the Hamilton map as it is. And overall, Hamilton kind of has a weird layout before we dive into the roadway. So if we go here and we just pull out the painting, this is all of Hamilton. It kind of extends a bit that way off the screen, goes down here onto the Hamilton mountain, all the way around here, up here, and then it actually includes this section right here. So this is what the Hamilton area really consists of. You have a bit more areas out here into Flamborough, same with Glenbrook, but the majority of municipal uh, development is going to be contained within kind of this circle here. So the first thing, what you can expect is the major roadway. So if you're gonna be living really where the bulk of Hamilton residents live, you have two major highways that are really gonna take you to Toronto out east. And the first one here is the 403, and it's gonna run along Aldershot, come along here and then go off both uh, to the western side of Hamilton and then leading you up all the way up to Ancaster before going to take you out uh, to like Brantford in London. Then the other option you have is the QEW, which is going to go right over here. It's going to go over the QEW Skyway. And then you have a couple options. You can go continue going out east, and this is going to take you to Grimsby and Niagara Falls out this way. Or you can take the Red Hill Valley, climb on up here, and then you're going to be met with the Lincoln Alexander Parkway, which is the main collector road along the Hamilton Mountain, um, and easy to get from one side to the other east to west. Then if you are looking to get east to west when you're living in central Hamilton, you're going to have really two main roads. So you're going to have one is Main Street West uh, or east, depending on where you're going. Uh, and it's going to be along this road here as well as King Street. Now, one of the things you are definitely going to notice when you're commuting, um, especially in like this section here of the central part of Hamilton, because it's been more developed uh, earlier on, there's a lot more one way roads. And that's one of the reasons why each of these roads here, King Street and Main Street, um, while it's a bit of a two-way stretch right here, the majority of it over here is going to be one way. So now you have a general gist of what you can expect for the major transportation going in and out. If we just zoom out here and we take a look first at the different areas. So go back here, kind of zip out here, as you can see. So depending on where you're going to be commuting on a regular basis, if you're going to be commuting to Toronto, Stony Creek is a great opportunity. Same with Waterdown. Um, now, there is a couple caveats here. If you are thinking about driving a lot out east to Burlington, Oakville, Mississauga, Toronto, or anywhere in that direction, one, there's typically going to be a large bottleneck in Burlington right along Branch Street here where the QEW and 403 before they split. And that's also going to happen in the morning when it's converging and then at night when you're coming home, you can definitely notice it. Other than that, a few other areas where you're really going to see the bottleneck of traffic add up. If we just move the cursor down here a little bit, we have the Red Hill Valley. Um, a lot of people that live on the Hamilton Mountain tend to commute a lot, and therefore this area here can definitely get backed up uh, a lot with traffic. And then same with the link because it kind of just carries on over. Um, other than that, some of the municipal roads like inside the city do get backed up. However, I do find overall, they do clear out pretty well. Um, the other note is, is if like you're living in Waterdown, there's gonna be a few major uh, bottlenecks first. Oops. If I delete this here and go to the cursor, first major bottleneck you're going to have if you're commuting this is you're going to have the highway or Dundas or Highway 5 uh, really runs out throughout it. At one point, there is a one way, uh, like one lane, one lane, and then a turning lane in the middle. Here it gets really bottled up during traffic. And then as well, you have Waterdown Road, which is going to take you to the 403. That definitely gets backed up. And right now, as I'm recording this, they're doing some renovations to expand it. Um, but those renovations or construction, I should call it, uh, definitely causes some delays at the moment. 
Then same with Dundas, you're going to run into a few different bottlenecks as well. First bottleneck you're going to really find is around this area here. And this area here just are the real two choke points to get to the highway before getting there. And then other than that, um, what you can expect just in the general areas now of Hamilton. And if we kind of break them down, we have a few different areas. So we'll talk about the, the first part, which is central Hamilton. And this is really anywhere here. Now it's really tucked between the Red Hill Valley out to the east, which is there. We have the Hamilton Harbor or Lake Ontario out here to the north. And then it cuts in over here and kind of runs up this here, sneaks back this way, and then goes along the escarpment like this here. And that is the Central Hamilton. Now there's a variety of sections within Central Hamilton here. So of course, everyone knows Hamilton is known for Steel City. You got the DeFasco, Stelco, uh, and just Hammer Town's name all comes from. So where that area is, is really in these industrial sectors right here. So if you kind of draw a long Barton and go anywhere north of basically up to here, this area right here, is gonna have all the industrial sector uh, where you're gonna really notice the manufacturing. At the same time though, it does have some great opportunities to get in for affordable real estate. Here, you're gonna find a lot of homes that were really built like 1920 to like 1960, 70, um, and are gonna offer a great opportunity for first time home buyers. Then the next section you're really going to notice is the downtown core of Hamilton, which is really in this section here. This is where you're gonna find a lot of events, a lot of great bars, restaurants, uh, just everything going on that you could possibly imagine in this section here. It's also where you're gonna find Jackson Square um, and a great shopping opportunities within it as well. Then outside of the downtown area, you're gonna get two parts. So if we just simply break it up to keep it simple, you have the west side of Hamilton. This is where you're gonna find McMaster on the other side of the 4-3 and I find a lot of McMaster students kind of live within this bubble right here in Westdale or Ainsley Wood, uh, west, east or north, depending on where you just buy your student home. Uh, but this is a great opportunity. But then you also have Kirkendall, um, and this is a great neighborhood. You got Lock Street right along there with some many great local businesses. Now, when you're looking in central Hamilton, this area over here is going to typically be those older red brick homes. However, you're going to find a mixture of a lot of ones that have been recently renovated, perfect for families that are looking to upsize and get those two story, two and a half story, large detached homes in walkable neighborhoods with many local businesses and parks to enjoy. Then if you head out Eastway here, you're gonna find a bit more affordable options in the central Hamilton. These homes here tend to be a bit smaller, especially as you move more further out here uh, as they were just developed a little bit later, but do offer some great green spaces to enjoy. One of my particular favorites is this one here. You got Gage Park, an absolutely stunning garden uh, full of roses that I love to go with my neighbors to take the dogs out. Uh, and there's a lot of great cafe, like Cafe Bafico is one of my favorite cafes. This is just here. So we usually go there, grab a little, you know I mean, a salad sourdough donut, I've never had a sourdough donut, would highly recommend, and then usually toot it around Gage Park, and they got some sort of festival, either it's a food truck festival, a rib fest, or just a simple like farmer's market where you can go out and kind of toot around uh, and get that. So there's lots of activity to go on here. The other area that sees a lot of events is in this Bayfront Park, and this is kind of in like the North Hamilton area, right over here. So if I just kind of clear the drawing to make it a little simpler, and we go here, we got the North Hamilton. Now this area here is going to see a lot of transformation in the coming years as this little Pier 8 park right here has just been purchased and is going to be a massive new development full of condos, townhomes, and just connects to James Street, which is some of my favorite local businesses. And then of course you have Bayfront Park right here, like I mentioned, hosting many different events that are happening within Hamilton. So that's kind of central Hamilton broken down for you. The next area uh, I find a lot of people are interested in is Hamilton on the mountain. Now, depending on where you're coming from, the mountain can mean a variety of things. As if we go here and we really map it out, we have the escarpment, right? And this is where you're really gonna notice the divide is this, we'll call it 100 foot, probably a little bit less than that, like 80 feet uh, escarpment that divides all this area right here. Kind of wrap around here, come on up and go like this, and then cuts in here. All right, and there are a couple areas within the Hamilton Mountain as well, like Central Hamilton. The first part, uh, and one of my favorite areas, is the North Hamilton Mountain here. Here, we're gonna find a lot of, um, of those older homes that were really built in like those 1950s, so it's those bungalows, one and a half story homes, 
perfect for any first time home buyers, new families that are looking to get a lot of space with their home that have a great backyard, but are a more affordable option to choose from. You also will have Concession Street along this street right here, which is perfect fell of many local businesses like Cowabunga Pizza, in my opinion, the best pizza place in all of Hamilton. You also got another location, where is it? Vine Street, just down here in the central Hamilton area for Cowabunga. But great options here if you're looking to buy a full detached home or also there's some few house hacking options here where you have the basement finished. Great opportunities there as well. Then the next section within Hamilton's uh, mountain is the West Hamilton Mountain. Now it's really anything up to here to Stone Church Road and over. Now here is going to be some of the more established and expensive neighborhoods to purchase on the Hamilton Mountain. Uh, great reasons for this. You have amazing amenities close by as if you're living in this area here, you do get great access uh, to the massive Ancaster Plaza where you got like the Home Depot, you got the Cineplex, you have an Indigo, you have a Costco, just Golf Town, whatever, you name it, it probably has it there. And if it doesn't have it there, it also has it along Upper James Street right here. This is gonna be another major shopping center. Uh, really just goes along the whole way of the mountain with a variety of large power centers, gonna offer you a variety of different big box chain realty tours to go and check out. Then the next area of the Hamilton Mountain, if we kind of clear that off there, is the Central Park. And that's really anything, if we go here, over here, and up like this. This is the central part of Hamilton. Uh, you're gonna offer a lot of great variety to choose from in this. You got a little bit of everything. You got the smaller detached homes up here. You have the the more recently like 90s, 80s, uh, bigger detached homes over in this area here as well, as well as Lime Ridge Mall. This is the number one flagship mall in all of Hamilton's mountain. Great opportunity if you're getting any last minute shopping in for Christmas presents. I was there, I know, uh, the day before Christmas. Uh, last year, really ringing in uh, the gifts and getting it done. Then the other area on the Hamilton Mountain is this east area, right over here. It kind of cuts off um, as the escarpment ends here. Here's gonna be some great affordable options to choose from, similar to Central Hamilton. The further west you go, the more expensive it gets. And also on the Hamilton Mountain, the further south you go, so away from the Hamilton escarpment, you're gonna have notice newer homes that were built. Uh, really like after you pass, really Stone Church, you're gonna notice a lot of homes are built 80s, more even in the 90s. And then we even have some recent developments done today. Over here, you're gonna find a similar mixture. You're gonna get some of those smaller detached homes over here. And then you're gonna get some absolutely beautiful two-story double car garages in these areas right here. And that's right beside Mohawk's Barts Park, which is in this section here. And if your kids are playing sports as much as I did growing up, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the Mohawk Sports Park Center. I don't know how many, there's probably like 15 different baseball diamond soccer fields uh, and ice rinks to choose from. And then right beside that, you of course have the King Forest um, park area, which has got two great waterfalls to explore. You got Albion Falls and Buttermilk Falls right along the path. So you can easily go for a walk uh, and enjoy that there as well. And then if you're a golfer like myself, this is probably the easiest section on the Hamilton Mountain to get to some good golf courses. You got, uh, if we kind of zoom in right here, you got the King Forest Golf Club right here, as well as Glendale Golf Course right here, kind of tucked into the escarpment, so it offers some great spectacular views and it kind of split up along the Red Hill Valley. So that kind of makes up Central Hamilton, the Hamilton Mountain. The next area you need to pay attention to would be Stony Creek. So if we kind of move this over a little bit more to make sure we include all of it. This is Stony Creek. It kind of runs up the, change my pen color, kind of runs all the way up the Red Hill Valley here and now we're on the escarpment, and it really goes like this. But the majority of areas you're gonna be looking for the majority of real estate is gonna be in this area here. Now, I like to divide up Stony Creek really into four main different areas so that you best know about it. The first area is more of those homes that are recently being developed. I have a lot of clients really loving to move here, and this is what we're talking about. Like, if you choose the wrong area, it could absolutely kill your time living in Hamilton. So definitely reach out to me if you are interested in moving here. We could create a custom video and go through your consultation call, the best neighborhoods. But this area here is absolutely fantastic as you're gonna get a lot of new build, detached homes and townhomes to choose from while also getting some great amenities. Um, as the original neighborhoods on Stony Creek on the mountain uh, were really built like in the 70s and 80s, but we've seen a lot of expansion 
mentioned here over the last 10 years. And here you're going to find two major shopping plazas if you kind of zoom in. The first one is in this area here, right along Rhino Road and Upper Centennial. A lot of different shopping options to choose from. And then the other area is just in this area here. As you can see, you got the Best Buy, you got PetSmart, Home Depot, Five Guys, another Cineplex, of course. You got like Sushi, oh not Sushi Asana, excuse me, that's one of my go-to uh, sushi places. You got August 8th here as well, which is another great uh, sushi place to enjoy. So, and if you're living in this area here, one of the waterfalls you must check out is just along Upper Centennial. You got the Devil's Punch Bowl right here, an absolutely stow shopping uh, waterfall to enjoy with spectacular views as well as Falker Falls, probably the two uh, most notable waterfalls uh, within Stony Creek on the mountain. Then the next area of Stony Creek is really like the heart of Stony Creek where it originally started is the central Stony Creek. So if we kind of draw a map as simply put along Red Hill Valley, go up like this, kind of go all the way over to right here, drop down, go along the QEW. This is where you're gonna find downtown like Stony Creek along here, offering some great local businesses. You got Eastgate Square right here as well. Now these neighborhoods here are gonna find a little bit older homes, but here you're gonna find amazing uh, like back splits, side splits, uh, and two story homes uh, that offer great size lots as well. And one of the favorite things I definitely know about people living uh, in this part of Stony Creek is the ease of access to the QEW as you're not gonna get caught up with the bottleneck on the Red Hill Valley here, the Upper Centennial, or the QEW here, you're gonna be really just jumping on and pretty much hitting Burlington within like 10 minutes of your drive, which I know a lot of my clients love. Then the next area, which is a commuter's dream, especially for young professionals, is really North Stony Creek. Now, North Stony Creek isn't gonna be the most walkable area, but it's gonna offer a lot of great waterfront condos as well as uh, townhomes to choose from, and that is just anything north of the QEW right along here like this, kind of cut in here. Here, similar to like this, you're just gonna jump on the QBW almost immediately when you leave your door, like within one light, two lights, you're already on uh, the QBW. You got Confederation Park right here, which is great uh, for any young kids. You got the Wild Waterworks, Adventure Village, Confederation Beach here, a recently finished, uh, they just recently uh, updated Confederation Park as well. So we'll definitely need to go check out that this summer myself. Uh, just a totally great opportunity. And then if you aren't necessarily looking to commute to Toronto, while well, you can commute to Toronto from here, definitely adds a bit of commute is in Winona. Now here is personally one of my favorite areas because it really does remind me of like Burlington when I was growing up. You got this area over here, a couple reasons for this. You got a lot of development going on. As you see, you got the Costco right here, massive shopping center, pretty much within drive, like within a three to five minute drive of most of the homes in Winona. Uh, a lot of development is seen going on here, but you also can find a lot of homes that were built like 90s, early 2000s, uh, that do offer with easy walkability to just enjoy the waterfront in Winona, or if you're looking for those newer developments or some older homes that have larger lots, a great option over here as well. And then my favorite barbecue place, hands down, bar none, is Memphis Buyer uh, Barbecue Company right here. Was on You Gotta Eat here. It's one of the best barbecue places uh, in all of Ontario. So would highly, highly, highly recommend, you know what I mean, picking up some barbecue. I personally picked up some barbecue going down to 50 Point Conservation Area, which is a large conservation area. You got the beach, you got the waterfront trails, you got the boat harbor, you got everything you could possibly need if you enjoy the outdoor life. Um, and I just bring the barbecue, go down to the beach and have a great day. So that made up Stony Creek. Now, there are a few other areas you might be interested in as well. So if you kind of flip on over to the west side of Hamilton, you got Ancaster. Now, Ancaster is probably the most expensive place uh, to buy residential real estate. You can find a bit more expensive in like Flamborough, but that's gonna be more rural areas and you're gonna be buying larger lots. Like if you're looking for a like $2 million home, high 1.1s uh, or high 1 millions, excuse me, you can find that here. Absolutely stunning estates, amazing schools, great parks. Like, can't say enough great things about Ancaster. Um, you do get easy access. Like, if we kind of zoom in here now, kind of break down Ancaster. Oops, not save. I want to delete that. Go delete all. We go in here. All right, so you got the Meadowlands. This is a great opportunity. I know a lot of people looking to move to Ancaster. Love the Meadowlands. If you're looking for um, like some beautiful, stunning, uh, detached homes that are custom built, you can find that like in the Spring Valley neighborhood, kind of in this kind of corridor right here. You got Ancaster Heights with some nether spectacular detached homes that offer uh, like a Scarman views, especially if you're along kind of this ridge right here. Now, as for shopping options, when you're gonna be living in uh, Ancaster, the few major shopping options will be in this area right here. You got like Walmart, you got Longos, 
just a variety of different shopping centers in here. Then you got a few more along Osler um, right here as well. And then of course, along Golf Links, like I mentioned last time, you got the Costco, you got the Best Buy, great shopping options to choose from. Now, if you are living in Ancaster and are going to commute, you are going to notice a few bottlenecks like coming up kind of the 403, it does bottleneck a bit there. Same with along like Osler or Main Street, depending on where you're driving in this um, road right here as well. Then the kind of next area you might be interested in is Dundas. Love Dundas. Uh, it's really got that old time charm. And unlike like Ancaster, we're seeing some development, like a lot of development that we're seeing that's new if you're interested in new homes, like Stony Creek on the Mountain, Winona, and Waterdown, we'll get to in a second. And Dundas, you're not gonna see a lot of that. It's really like a lot of character homes and established neighborhoods that have been going strong for like the last 15 years to last like 50, 60, 70 years, depending on where you're looking. Uh, and that's because like Dundas really sits in a valley. So you're gonna kind of notice the escarpment is going to run along the edges of this here, which does create for some great opportunities if you're looking to really capitalize on uh, Hamilton's great waterfalls and hiking trails. This might be the best area if you got like dogs and you're gonna go out for regular walks and wanna capitalize, this might be the area for you. As you got kind of downtown Dundas here, really giving you that small time charm that it has to offer you. And then just a short drive away from many different detached homes. You got Dundas Valley Conservation Area, an amazing expansive park to just go walk more on flatlands. If you're looking to go for a bit more of a hike with scenic views, you got Spencer's Gorge right in this area here, which considers probably like if, if you're going to Hamilton for one day, one weekend, and you have one hike to go on, this is the hike for you. I take everyone here uh, that's friends visiting from out of town as you got Webster Falls right here. You got Toos Falls uh, right here. So Webster Falls, if you don't know, is probably the most iconic waterfall in Hamilton. Toos Falls, the tallest waterfall in Hamilton. And then you got Dundas Peak, which you just kind of continue walking along Toos Falls and you end at Dundas Peak and you get a spectacular views of really the valley Dundas sits in and all the great opportunities it has to offer you. So that makes up Dundas. And then the last area let's take a look at uh, is Waterdown. Now Waterdown is kind of almost separate from the rest of Hamilton as you're really going to have to commute to the rest of Hamilton if you're looking to go to Watertown. Now, if you're not looking to commute to Hamilton on a regular basis, Waterdown is definitely a great option to choose from. So this is Waterdown, of course, kind of in this action area right here. And it kind of is split. You kind of got, like I mentioned, you got the downtown Waterdown part right here. Uh, a lot of great local business. You got Copper Kettle with some amazing apple, um, like apple shooter donuts. I don't even know what they're called, but I would highly recommend if you're going there, uh, sitting down, grab a coffee, you can get those. Uh, does create a bit of bottleneck with the traffic along this area here. And that's because like Dundas Highway 5 is definitely a popular commuter lane. Same with Highway 6, same with the 403. And this is kind of just like the, the area where it really merges. Now, if you are looking for new homes in Waterdown, you're going to find a really new um, area in this area right over here on the north or southeast side of Waterdown as well as the northwest side. Other than that, you're going to find a lot of great established neighborhoods um, kind of throughout Waterdown, both in this area over here and in this area. Really built like 80s, 90s. Um, great parks uh, within it to choose from as well. So I hope you now have a bit better idea of what it's like living in Hamilton and the different regions, as well as what you can expect from the shopping, a little bit more about the parks and the roadways you might be taking on a regular basis. If you are interested in learning the cost of living in Hamilton, the next video I recommend you go check out is my video covering exactly that. So you can find that video right here. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.